AZ, the patient I've been working with with AZ, was uh, very sensitive uh, indeed to uh, semantic uh, distance effects. And we showed this by uh, comparing uh, oh, animals and uh, fruits with objects. And if they were all animals, she'd make more errors than if there was one animal, one fruit, uh, and uh, one object. And we were also interested in whether um, she would show these close and distance effects uh, within the proper noun uh, vocabulary, because uh, it's very quite difficult to uh, examine the, if you like, the semantic organization uh, within uh, the uh, proper noun uh, vocabulary. And we started off uh, with uh, people with uh, different occupations, and she would get, uh, if you like, more, make more errors if you used uh, people um, with the same occupation uh, than if you had one from one of three occupations. And uh, we were then, this led us on to considering uh, geographical terms, which are also uh, fairly proper nouns. And if you uh, used, uh, had, shall we say, three Scandinavian countries, three South American countries, or three European countries, her error score would be uh, really quite high. All she had to do was, when I said uh, Sweden, she simply had to point to a card that said Sweden, etc. But if you had one uh, stimulus from each of the three groups, so you had one Scandinavian country, one European country, and one South American country, she could do it uh, very accurately. So here we had these uh, very clear-cut uh, geographical uh, similarity effects. And we pushed our luck a little bit here by uh, seeing whether this uh, she was sort of sensitive, if you like, to a sort of north, south, east, west arrangement within England. And uh, she, in fact, did. We had uh, three northern towns, three East Anglian towns, three South Coast towns uh, as a group, and she had to point to them. Uh, or we had one from uh, east, north, and west. And here again, uh, we found that she was very sensitive, literally, to uh, not so much semantic distance, but actual uh, distance in these. Uh, in testing her. And so uh, we used this as evidence that uh, this type of factual information is encoded in our brain in terms of, uh, if you like, the compass points. Uh, I take the view that these patients studied appropriately provide a window on the organization of semantics without uh, having to uh, make, have more demanding uh, criterion of having an actual deficit or selective impairment. In these uh, patients, one can actually, I believe, observe this very fine grain organization in patients with relatively large lesions. And this, I think, is a very <coughs> has great potential for the future, and I certainly hope to be able to go on uh, with this, uh, with our collaboration, and uh, well into the future. <laughs>